Saturday afternoon from the 10th annual Gridlife Midwest Festival, a weekend filled with music and motorsports and a smattering of car culture from all across the country. Joining us one more time for GLTC race number three of four of the weekend. We are about midway through the afternoon. The day is coming to a close in just a couple of hours' time. I'm Kyle Heyer, joined by Cerise from FC Piero. Welcome back, Cerise, Thank you so for much our for third me. race of the weekend. Yes, we are. We're here. We're cruising right on through. Well, I can't believe it, it, it's almost halfway through set. I can't believe where we are. It happens so fast. It really, really does. I so know. We're on track getting ready for GLTC race number three. They're on track pacing. They're going to get two pace laps before we turn them loose for 12 to 15 minutes. This morning, Paul Curley had a, a, an issue, but we'll talk about that here in just a moment's time. Grid Life Midwest coverage is powered by Hyundai. Hyundai N. Never just drive. And Falcon, the official tire of Grid Life track battle. Paul Curley had that engine issue this morning, Cerise, and dropped him out of the chance to qualify in the GLTC Top 10 shootout. He will start from the tail of the field if he was able to repair that car, but I do not see him yet at the uh, the back of the field. So uh, that is a bummer, but with our requalification that we did a little earlier today, it's going to restack and reshuffle the order, and that will put on a uh, poll for this one. Jeremy Swenson, Luke McGrew, followed by Eric Attila and James Howley, your front two rows. What did this do? This shifted Matan Rosenberg uh, out of that top four. It moves Eric Attil right in behind Jeremy Swenson. Now, what has Eric Attil not done since he's built this, uh, this new Civic? He has not won. And Cerise, this might be his best opportunity here this weekend. And we know that he's hungry for it, too, because when he was at Watkins, he did podium. Yeah. And that gives you that taste and that sense of, like, okay, we can do this. Um, but it's, it's, it's a big difference between being, you know, two to three and then going into first. So he has had an exceptional season so far. The two rounds that he's competed in, Circuit of the Americas and at Watkins Glen, Eric Cattill has finished no worse than fifth, and he's finished third four times. So what he would give to go up one or two more spots, Reese, but it's t stiff competition with two of the fastest cars in the field right ahead of him. It's, it's got to be a frustrating position to be in. I feel like when you're just so close to the gold, uh, but you know what, we have the rest of the season too, where we haven't reached championships. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, you don't have to win every race, you just have to participate. Consistency is the key. You said it earlier, Cerise. We're talking about not only in power level, we're talking about the season throughout. Jeremy Swenson looks down the line in terms of how you win a championship. You don't yeah. need to win every race. Finishing third in every single race this season, you can win a championship like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. The problem is if there's someone finishing first in every race, you can't. But <laughs> he's got to get by Jeremy Swenson to do that. He's won six of 13 races so far this season. Uh, as James, our points leader. As our, as our points leader. You mentioned it. And James Houghton has won a couple of races. He's going to start alongside Eric Cotillo in fourth place. So 50-car yeah. field lined up behind one of our uh, our pace car winners of our pace car contest here this weekend. Cerise, we do that every event. We have a, uh, a, a Instagram competition on our social media, at Grid Life Official. You can sign up uh, for Mid-Ohio, Lime Rock, or WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Yep. And uh, out front right now, look at this. Pontiac. Yeah. Is it 3,000? I, I don't, look, I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> But if you guys are if you guys are <laughs> if you guys are coming out to any of those locations, um, definitely you know give it a go. You never know. I mean, this is a very unique opportunity. We have Mike Cohn uh, out here that drives all of our pace cars, and what a special privilege that is for him. Uh, but consistency, like you said, in, in many areas of racing. I have been a pace car driver a couple of times, and it is really intimidating. Yes, you have an entire fleet. In this case, 50 cars behind you, and even though it's a pace lap, I correct me if I'm wrong. Is there still a lot of pressure? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, as far as from the pace car driver's perspective, you have to hold a constant 45 miles an hour. Mm. There are a couple corners on the calendar that are not 45 mile an hour corners. Sure. You have to stay consistent. You also have to make sure that uh, you've got the field under control, that you're making the appropriate radio communications. And for the drivers, this is your biggest butterfly moment. And let's be honest, these drivers get butterflies, Cerise. There's a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah. There's a lot on the line. They, they invest their life into this. This is their hobby. But... It's thousands of dollars to be here, Cerise. Yeah, and I mean, even, even even in what we do, and no matter how many times you do something, when you care about the end result, even coming onto live stream or doing reporting, you know, I still get a little bit of those jitters, but it's just because you're excited and you're and you just want to get out there and do the best that you can, and and that's what everybody out here is looking to do today. And uh, as we've mentioned before, you are racing against the competitors in your field, but you also are racing against yourself, and you're racing the track as you mentioned. So it's, there's there's a lot going through these drivers' heads at any given moment. So again, this field is set by the results from race two, with the exception of the top 10 that re-qualified earlier this afternoon in the top 10 shootout. Once we go racing, 
We're going to finish this race and restack for race four with the same ordering. It's going to be by the race result, with the exception that the top third of the field in race four will be inverted on a random draw. So you don't know where you're going to be yep. starting race four. All I can tell you is that if you are the winner of this race, you will not start on pole for race number four. That's the only certain thing uh, here in Grid Life Touring Cup race three and four. Behind the safety car, stacked up, paired up very nicely now. They've had a couple really good strong starts. The goal in the series, the single class sprint racing, short sprints, no contact. That's the expectation. We saw a little slip, slip and slide. I wonder, oh, never mind. I was thinking of a different incident. I was wondering uh, if Ronnie Vidoc had another issue. Oh, trouble for the 41 of no. James Houghton. He's pulled off at the inside at turn 10A, well off track, but that car has had a mechanical problem, yeah. and that could be weekend destroying for James Houghton. Now he's rolling again, hmm. but we come to the green flags race. Here we go, race three at Grid Life Midwest. 10 years. And we're going racing again. Look at the start by Waldbaum. Three across as they head into turn one. Eric Jensen three wide into turn one as well. Big moments, big moves into the first quarter. Cattill, middle three wide. Look at them all span out through turn one and turn two. Side by side, Luke McGrew now to the in inside door of Jeremy Swenson. We're three abreast, five, six, seven rows deep as we leave the corner. Cattill battling McGrew for second place. What an epic start, Cerise. Now down to turn three. <laughs> I just thoroughly enjoy listening to you comment this. Here we go. We're coming around. Jeremy Swenson, now he has, it was a bit of a somber win last time, but I don't think that that's phasing him this time around. I think that he's coming into each corner with pure intention. And look at Cattell side by side oh, with Luke McGrew. Running away from him. Here we go. As they did at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. Last year, they are door to door. Good friends here in GLTC, but McGrew clears oh, he Cattell. He is on him. Cattell is so hungry for it. Oh, let's see if he can come in on the next braking zone. On driver's left now into turn seven. If you can get around the outside here, you can carry pretty good speed. Look at Austin Hurdle up a few spots. Joel Morrison, a big dive into seven in the green S2000, but McGrew hangs on. Cattell yep. slots to third and Waltbaum up a bunch of spots into fourth. What a start. This is going to be a really interesting, these first four, now Jeremy, is, he's really kind of pulling away and he has that advantage, but this is going to be an interesting, with these three cars here in the front, I mean, this is going to be a, a race battle on its own. And as we progress through the race, you're going to see these guys section out and it's going to be really be them against whoever's in front of them. Luke McGrew a little wide there at the exit of 10B, Cattell's going to talk, oh, trouble, oh, car okay. off at turn 10B. And that is the 871 of Arimas Carosis. That Carosis. door is open. The right rear door has come open. He is in the gravel trap, and that will likely draw oh, no. a full course yellow. So get yourself in line because that would be the expectation here. Swenson leads, McGrew second, Cattill third, Waldbaum. And now we'll have to wait for the rest of the order to settle out as they cross the stripe here. I almost wonder if that was a, a little error maybe by someone on the team not shutting the door, if that distracted him. We'll have to get more information from him later, see what happens. I, I wonder if he just hit the gravel so hard that it just it popped, popped open. open. It's possible. But uh, that was a quick stop there, but that's what that gravel was designed to do. We continue racing, at least for now, up the back straightaway towards turn three. Swenson leads, McGrew, Cattill, and there's another car Oh, off. that's two of them. It's oh, Jason oh, Saney. It's Jason Saney in the 73 car. He's also off. He's way beyond the sand wow. trap over there. See if we can see him from the aerial view. And there's another car off. This time it's on driver's left into turn three. So more issues we're now. We're still looking at a dry track, so we're gonna we're gonna count our blessings where we can, but let's make sure that nobody's hurt or uh, Well that's what I'm I, I'm expecting uh, that they're not gonna just leave those cars we down. Seen a flag yet. No. I don't know if we're just waiting on them to cross that line. Um, we're still waiting. I mean again if, if we don't get a yellow, it's fair game race everywhere, but I'd expect there to be a yellow flag at one of these corner stations. And all that does, Cerise, is it means that you can't pass in that zone. There's there that waving yellow yep. flag. So that is just a local yellow, which means that you cannot pass in this zone. That's going to reduce the opportunities for Cattell. There's the full course yellow now. Double yellow flags waving from the stations. Is and he? this is going to slow down the race. And uh, that is another car, this time a red S2000. I think Salil Shukla that is off at the entrance to turn three. Oh, and looking there very good. That's a good shot right there. Is Saney. And that's a great example, like you were saying, the gravel in the sand is meant to really just like scrub your speed so you don't go flying off, which works for one of them. Yeah, and that just tells you that the speed that yeah. Saney was carrying in, I almost wonder, you have to start thinking. Speed and weight. Well, you have to start thinking about mechanical failure, brake failure, something like that. To get that far off, you have to have a pretty big moment. And uh, yeah. I can't tell if there's damage on oh, these yeah, cars. Oh, you can see his line right here. He really, wow. But that was a, that was a big off for both of them there. Yeah, they're feeling it right now. So this is going to arrest this race for now. And what this means now, Cerise, is that that safety car is going to come back out on the racetrack. Yep. We're going to get everyone behind it. We're going to slow everyone down. We're going to go clean up this incident. Now, here's the scenario. Got a car in the gravel. That is a very convenient <laughs> corner <laughs> corner worker placement. Can't miss that he one. He means business. He's like, I am sending a very clear message. Yep. So 
Um, and the, by the way, the local yellow waving with the double yellow is for that incident at turn number three with Solo Shukla. So the, here's the scenario though. We have three cars to collect yeah. in seven minutes. Not confident that we're gonna get that all done. If that were to be the case and we end this race under yellow, Oh, oh no, that, that, that's oh, no, a that's replay. replay. Yep. Okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry oh. about that. Uh, <laughs> but I, again, I didn't. So Sandy, there he goes, rolling to yeah, a stop there. And he tried to roll that car back. Yeah. Uh, but the safety crew already on scene. That is a very quick. Oh, there is some damage. The left front tire, yep. I, I think, looks. Is that, that looks like the, yeah, that looks like the, the hub might be a little bit shot. Yeah. So I guess my point I was getting at is this race could and very well might end under yellow. Yep. which means that uh, all the racing, all the wild moments that happened on that opening lap, those are going to pay off for drivers like Waldbaum, who made up a whole bunch of positions to get up into fourth place. Eric Jensen made a big dive into turn one. That paid off for him. Uh, but Swenson, if he could just cling on to this and finish this race out, it'd be a second one on the weekend. Yeah. And I mean, this, this is the perfect example. Like, this is when the stakes get higher. You know, like we, you were talking last time uh, about, you know, the different pressures that come with the races. This one, as you were mentioning, correct me if I'm wrong, there is more pressure here because of what you were saying with the inversion um, and just generally progressing through the weekend. And when people are out here and they're really fighting for it, this is, you know, when you have to be careful what mistakes can happen. And well, and, and exactly. We've had two really clean races so far. We have. And so I'm very lucky. You try not to get complacent as a driver in situations like this and the incident rate of GLTC is very very low but that doesn't mean it's impossible to have right. an accident and, uh, we don't know how this started but we know how it finished yep. and uh, again with this both these cars being real far off track this is gonna be a, a long cleanup series real far off track and really really deep into the track too yeah again pretty far along into the corner I've seen people make mistakes exiting turn nine and the crossing speed over. that you develop, yeah. Yeah, and, and then you, you'd spin a little earlier in this, so you have to wonder, as they get near the apex, if there was just a touch, but for Sandy to be that far off course, you'd have to be carrying, that's why I throw in mechanical failure of some kind, whether yeah. it's tire, brake, wheel failure. That's not also where I would expect two cars to pass each other, so I'm kind of doubting that there was um, collision based upon you know uh, a passing zone or, or just general driving. I think that you might be right, but like I said, we'll, we'll try and get some updates for you guys later. Yeah, again, I, I, all I saw was Carosa stop it, and Sadie must have been driver's left, and, and big thanks to Kevin behind the scenes and John Raymond. We have gotten confirmation that both drivers are, are okay. Thank you. Um, so appreciate that, uh, give, giving us the updates mid-race. So uh, that's awesome. That's the best news of all series. But yeah. um, again, high consequence corners here at, at times, turn nine into turn 10. Not really a passing zone. It can be. But uh, I think the problem is, is early in the race, even if you're not trying to pass somebody, you're just side by side. So exactly. if someone slips, uh, it can be day over for both of you, as we see there. Was so that lap one? Uh, I think it was lap two. Two, yeah. So we're still, you know, like you said, cars are too deep. You know, sometimes one or three. But well, 50 cars in the field. It's just hard to find <laughs> your own room, <laughs> yeah. Cerise. It's claustrophobic out there It at is. Times. It really is. And so the thing was, all these drivers, they have Hans devices on, right? That's for safety, and we love that. But it really does limit the, the range of, of mobility that you have. You want to just look straight, and you want to be able to look in your rear view. But when you have so cars either on your side or in your blind spot, you know, being able to look over is not always an option. So, so I'd, I'd like to pull a silver lining out of this if we yeah, can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Please do. Though we have had a full course yellow for race number three, this is our first full course yellow since our first round of racing back at Circuit of the Americas. So we have not had an, an incident that has caused a yellow wow. flag uh, since March, basically. Good job, men and women. So, I mean, that, that's two cars come back to pit lane. One of them is the 333 of Fiona Lou, the other the 36 of Tyler Starr. So I wonder if that is a mechanical related problem. Uh, but they have rolled back into the pit lane. I can just see out my side window there. Have we heard about any other cars having overheating issues in the last race? Uh, I have not heard any updates on that. So okay. as far as uh, overheating, uh, I good. think the drivers were chasing how to solve that, at least for today. That is an expected issue. Like we were saying, it is really hot today. Um, the cars are going to be put under different level of stress uh, just because of the weather Com coming off of much colder it was very rainy uh, the setups were different now they're expecting better weather but that doesn't mean that you can account for everything that's about to go wrong yeah so with that again uh, just waiting for confirmation of what is coming next uh, for uh, grid life tour and cup race number three here as we approach the end of our time slot here we're about nine minutes in and if they are to extract all of those cars that had issues, we could get a lap or two of racing, uh, but it is not often that uh, when you've got three cars having issues, it's, it's hard to just get enough tow trucks to get them all in that amount of time. Yeah. So, uh, 
So we'll hope that we get some more racing. We will have more racing in race four. That will happen at around six o'clock later today. So make sure you tune in. We've also got the NOS Energy Track Battle Podium Sprint up later this afternoon and some more drift coverage. We've got Chris Stewart in the house for that alongside Jared Vianda. That's going to be fun. And we'll be back for, uh, for race four. And then I'll be back in here with Alex Moss for the Track Battle Podium Sprint, which I am very excited about. Some of the best, closest time attack I think I've ever seen here at Gingerman yeah. Raceway. So really exciting stuff. Overall, the whole energy this weekend has been really great. I think everybody's showing up putting their best dress on. But here we are. All right, how many how many safety vehicles do we have out here? Well, we've got uh, one tow truck. I think they're just trying to drag the 871 out potentially. Yeah. But Aurimus Corosis. They've yeah. got a tow strap on him, and then they've got the flatbed for Saney's car. Now, oh, there is, uh, I can't tell. Wow, is, is that the entire front corner just I think so. Maybe. A I didn't see any debris on the track. So that's going to be uh, when they get that thing, hopefully on the flatbed, maybe we can get a better uh, view from a drone or something yeah, like that. And that's Jason standing on the left there. And uh, what a what a gut wrenching sight that is. Yeah. Oh, OK, so the whole left corner of that oh. Porsche is definitely torn up. So are now, we thinking there might have been some collision on that? There, there, well, he hit something and there's not a lot of walls to hit. Exactly. So you, I just have to wonder how they came together and you can only speculate right now, Cerise, because we saw the 871 slide into the sand, but to have the left front corner hit something, Sandy would have probably had to go to the right to get that, but he was around the outside, so who knows? And uh, Renee Hines, who's up, uh, he, she's our, our, our director uh, for mm -hmm. the races, and she is going to go find out what happened, and she'll issue penalties as she needs to. Here's, uh, here's, here's my guess. I, I'm, I'm assuming he tried to come in on the inside. Uh, E36 had an advantage and just maybe clipped him, and he went off and pushed this guy out of control. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, I'm speculating here, but this is just based off of a, you know, what we might know and what we... Yeah. Well, they're out. dragging Corosis's car out right. from the We the like movement, soundtrack. though. This is good. Well, and, oh, the right. Okay, so the right rear of that car. So you, now you door, can see yeah, the impact. The door. Oh, right. so okay. that's, and, and th that's why the door flung open. Yeah, so now you're seeing the puzzle pieces start yeah, to come together. Exactly. And, and, uh, what? So here's again, uh, we talked about this with Cotille. If you have a good cage builder, please go thank them. Yes, you're going to have to replace the door on that, but I th hopefully the frame will be fine and, and the, you know, Rails will be okay too, and you can yep. just get back out there, put a new door on it, or don't, you know, yeah. whatever. Rear, rear, all right, rear suspension on that car also torn up, which that'll be an unfortunate thing to have to replace. But sure. stuff that bolts on and off, that's good to see. But now the puzzle piece is fitting together. But of course, we can't speculate beyond how that started more than uh, than Renee Hines will be able yeah, to. Yeah, those later. are not parts that you want to be disposable. No, and uh, we do have in the rules for GLTC that all cars are required to have in car video, and not just in car over the hood you have to have a camera that shows where the driver's hands are yeah. and see what their inputs are so that uh, that you make sure that uh, everyone's doing the right thing it out. levels the playing field it makes sure that everybody can have a good clean race and it keeps accountability in, in check Certainly. so um not to point any fingers or of blame but not. make sure that everybody just does their job yeah and and again there's uh the amount of excellence we have is pretty low i mentioned we haven't had a full course yellow in a couple of months which is an unbelievable statistic but you're always rooting for green flag racing, which was why Watkins Glen was so amazing. Four races in the rain. We had a couple cars go off, but no car to car contact yeah. at an event that quite frankly, you, I was you prepared. Might, you were, you could expect it yeah. to send five, 10 cars into the Armco yeah. there. And so. not some people had it, had experience with Watkins, but there were a lot of newbies versus yep. Gingerman. These guys and gals are pretty familiar with this track. Either they've driven here before um, or they grew up, you know, watching races here. So, uh, you know, it's, it's what it is. So with that, again, uh, just for those that just joined, the uh, update I have uh, as far as how that incident or what caused that incident, uh, there was a, con a little bit of contact down at 10B between uh, the number 73 Porsche Cayman of Jason Saney and the 871 BMW E36 of Aremus Corosis. Don't know exactly how it started. We just saw how it finished with both cars in the sand trap, one beyond it. And then Salil Shukla had a simultaneous problem. Yeah, we haven't got an update two. from him either. Actually, no. is he ba he's not back on track. Is he? We did see him moving at one point. Okay, that's good to know. It could have just been one of those control, alt, delete, give things a little reset. <laughs> Reboot. And there's the checkered flag now. So this race will end under caution, unfortunately, for GLTC race number three, which will give the win to Jeremy Swenson, Luke McGrew, Eric Cotill, Matt Walbaum and Matan Rosenberg. That's your top five. Then Eric Jensen, Austin Hurdle, Zach Lavoie, Tony Marchev, and Ronnie Vidoc. Uh, in the two laps that we had to race, Andrew Rains up seven spots. Wes Case up eight. Uh, Julio Crispin up seven. Thomas Moss up seven. Chandler Rowe up seven. Jake Jornstad up nine positions in two laps. Salil Shukla down a whole bunch of spots. Eric Meadows down a bunch of spots. 
Uh, James Houghton did not take the green flag. Fiona Lou, Jason Saney, Aremis Karosis out. There's a look at your results real quickly there, yep. Cerise. Uh, yep. That is an unfortunate way to end race three, but sometimes it, it happens. A little bit, of, uh, again, somber, but we're going to be out here again, and they have another chance to uh, to reclaim uh, any kind of action that they wanted to, to put on the field today. Yeah, so one last look down the results. Carlos Mendez, shout out to him, top 15 in the number 14 car. Lena Chin, top 15 for her. Andrew Raines, West Case, Adam Ulrich, Gary Wimble, and Hans Horpital, the rest of the top 20. Yep. And uh, looking down the rest of the order here, Chandler Rowe in the, the 32 car, his first weekend back since 2019. Uh, so that was a, a, a unfortunate ending to what started as a wild race series. It, it was going to be so good. Sometimes you feel the energy come up a little too high, yeah. and then you're just worried that it's going to end like that. But yeah. we get to reset and do it one more time. I'm ready for that. I think that these guys, they're, they're going to be ready to. It's going to be like a little comeback race. So make sure that you tune in for the next GLTC. I think a lot of these, these people are going to have something to prove. So All right, GLTC race four later today. Up next, though, is going to be drift competition. We'll see you a little bit later. Born on the track, bred on the mountains. Raised on the podium, ready for anything and everything. Learn more about our entire line at falcontire.com. Four of you stay in the car. I'm Chris Forsberg, and I want to tell you about Valvoline's Flexfill Gear Oil, which is designed by car people for car people. It comes in a pouch, which is specifically made to work in tight spaces, and it saves me time versus the old pumping method so I can focus on things like keeping my drivetrain running clean. Unlike the pump, the Flexfill pouch leaves no wasted oil and no wasted time. Plus, it keeps my garage nice and clean from any spills. All you got to do is put the nozzle where you need some oil, give it a squeeze, and you're ready for the road. That's why I protect everything in my garage with Valvoline. Valvoline, trusted for over 150 years. <laughs> 